What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update as well, talking about what I personally did today on the 29th of May in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, ones that I'm keeping my eyes on here towards the end of May and heading into the month of June in 2019. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there, the subscribers, the viewers, if you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're actually new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box if you want to stay further connected with our community, the Strive Smart community, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group, both of those being 100% free of charge. So let's hop right into it, guys. The S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States, ended up closing the day down $19.37, down 0.7%, continuing this downwards trend that it's been on over the past couple of weeks. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing the day down 221 points, down 0.87%, doing a bit worse than the S&P 500. And the NASDAQ right now, you see it's up $7.50, but mind you, this is the future. If we're looking on the one day, one minute, so we can see the performance of the index today, Take a look. From 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard, roughly at about 72.30, we ended up closing down at about, let's see, 72.30, and we ended up closing at about 72.21. So it was a slight red day for the NASDAQ. So across the major markets, guys, yet again, another red day. The selling off continues. That's been in you know, in play over the past couple of weeks. For those of you guys that have been paying attention to the markets, we know ever since Trump sent out that tariff tweet on Sunday, a couple of Sundays ago, it was like four or five weeks ago at this point, I believe it, it was four weeks, I think it was in the beginning of May, the markets have been tumbling. And in yesterday's video, I talked about how the $2,800 level for the S&P 500 was a very, very important and critical level of support for the index. And what happened today, guys? Well, we broke that level. We closed the day. As you can see here, the price at about 2783 for the S&P 500. We broke that level again, like I said, $2,800. And now we're trading in this range from 2730 being the next support that I'm personally seeing and the 2800 level of resistance. So we're in the 70, 80 point window right now for the S&P 500. Judging on some smaller time frame charts, you can see week after week, again, we're closing lower and lower. This chart really just shows us the downtrend on a closer basis. This is the all-time high here at 29.54. And since then, guys, it's just been down, down, down. Moving averages, simple moving averages have, have been acting as resistance levels. We're noticing the bearish cross of the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. And today, we ended up pushing to a lower low, low at about 27.66, which is actually about... um. 17 points lower from where we ended up closing at. So the closing price of the S&P is actually good compared to how low it actually ended up getting today. We actually got pretty ugly towards the middle of the day here. We gapped down. We saw the pre-market futures were red. We gapped down. We saw that little run up. Then we got rejected and we just started to push down even lower. And that's where we made that lower low. And from there, 27.66 we rebounded quite nicely on the SPX going on that 17 point run. So at this point, guys, you know, I'm just watching and, and seeing what the S&P is going to do, right? Are we going to continue pushing down, maybe test 2730? I think that is possible here over the next couple of weeks. Do I think it's going to happen this week? Probably not unless we get an extreme, extreme uh, red day either tomorrow or Friday. But 
I personally think at this point, and a lot of people out there in our uh, community, in the Discord group, we're talking about how the S&P might see a rebound day or two rebound days. Because we notice here, every time we've pushed to a lower low, just take a look at what happened last time we did this. Or we could start from the uh, the previous time we did it as well. So we fell from 28.90 down to about 28.32. We made that low, and we rebounded for a day after that, right? We pushed to a low, and we rebounded for one, and then two days before pushing to that to that next low. So now it seems like we're consolidating. This could be tomorrow or Friday. This could be. A point in time where we rebound again and then test that 50 SMA on the 20 day or rather the 10 day um, 30 minute chart. So keep that in mind. We may potentially see that rebound if this trend um, you know, follows what it's been doing over the past couple of weeks. But nothing like that is set in stone. No one really knows what's going to happen. But I'm most likely or most definitely rather going to be watching the pre-market futures to see what they are telling me. So for example, if we wake up tomorrow morning and we see the S&P futures are down another 10, 15 points, you know, that would tell me, you know, during my analysis that we're gapping down again and we might see another red day, right? But let's say they're up 10 points, they're up 15 points, that would really push me to believing that we might be rebounding. So that's kind of what I'm watching for the S&P 500. The Dow Jones here on the 184-hour chart, we're noticing how we actually ended up holding a $25,000 level of support. If you guys were watching the Dow today, it got down to a point where I believe it was down 400 points at the worst point of today, again, during the middle of today's session. And at that point, I believe we were actually below the $25,000 price level level, you can see here we got to as low as $24,930. So we were actually 70 points below that level of support that we're currently holding again because we saw that nice little push up towards the end of the day on the Dow. But nonetheless, we're trading now just like I talked about in yesterday's video, we're trading in the range between $25,000 and $25,500, right? And at this point in time, if we do break the $25,000 level of support, I personally think it's going to happen eventually. Am I saying it's going to happen tomorrow or the next day? I'm not definitively saying that because I think we could potentially have a bounce back or two bounce back days here, but eventually I do think we're going to sell off. But once we do, if we do, sell off here and break below the $25,000 level. If I bring out my little handy dandy support resistance tool here, you know, if we look at some uh, some of the next levels we could potentially be going to, the next level might be $24,500. So if we break $25,000, keep an eye on the next support, roughly between $24,500 and about $24,600. And just like the S&P 500, you know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the smaller time frame charts, it's showing a lot of the same patterns, right? We've been selling off, lower lows, lower highs, getting rejected by simple moving averages here. We're noticing the bearish cross. And just like the S&P, we notice how every time that we've bottomed out at a lower low, we've ended up rebounding for either a day or a couple of days. Just take a look at this, guys. You know, lower low, rebound, lower low, rebound, lower low, rebound, lower low, rebound, lower low. We rebounded for a couple of days. We pushed to a lower low again today, like I said, at $24,938. And now we're slowly starting the rebound. So is this rebound going to continue tomorrow? That's what I'm looking for. Again, the futures are going to tell me that. And let's say we do pop up 50, 100 points in the pre-market futures for the Dow and we slowly start to truck up here you know the 50 SMA is what I'm going to be looking for as a rejection zone for the Dow and from there we may be seeing the continuation of the sell-off so that's pretty much it for the Dow Jones nothing crazy here again it's just been red over the past couple of weeks, this week in particular, it's been red as well. Uh, just a lot of the same guys, to be honest here. So the NASDAQ ended up... Um 
you know, pushing a bit lower today as well. We're noticing the futures are um, nicely trending up right now. We're noticing some green candlesticks forming here on top of what level of support is this? Give me a second, guys. Let's see. This level is at around $7,200, which used to be a resistance back in the beginning of March and back in, um, you know, the beginning of November in 2018, as well as the beginning of December. So actually, you know, I'd put this as probably the most critical level of support right now for the NASDAQ because if we end up breaking these levels and start pushing down to the low, low 7,000 7, level and maybe into the high $6,000 level, like $6,800, $6,900, we're going to be in levels or at levels rather that we haven't been in since this crash that we saw or the big sell-off that we saw in the October to November month and during that rebound period in January and February, guys. So keep an eye on the 7,200 level for the NASDAQ, the $7,000 level too. You know, this, this general area we're in is super important in my eyes for the NASDAQ. And if we're looking here uh, on the 20-day, one hour, a lot of the same, just like the S&P and the Dow, we're seeing the bearish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. The SMAs are acting as resistance levels with really no um, sign that we are going to reverse and see a bullish move in the NASDAQ. And I got a question, I believe yesterday in the comment section, I didn't reply to the comment yet, but I believe the, the comment was... Um, Something like, do you think the NASDAQ is going to go to all-time highs um, before a trade deal is reached? Uh, and, I, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and predict that, right? But I personally, um, you know, based off my personal opinion and my, um, you know, understanding of these technicals, you know, at this point, we're downtrending. And until we see a bullish break, you know, I don't really think we're going to head to those all-time highs again. And especially with the pressure that, you know, the stock market, the economy, you know, this trade war is putting everything under, right? It's putting everything under a ton of pressure. And to be honest, if we don't get a trade deal, you know, I think the markets are going to continue to drop until we either get some more clarity on a trade deal or until we come to a trade agreement, right? If we come to a trade agreement, I think that would be a huge positive catalyst for the entire stock market. But I'm not personally seeing that right now because every time we've gotten a deadline for the trade deal, it's been pushed back. It's been pushed back. It's been pushed back. And I just think a lot of that is going to continue to happen here. It seems like Trump is obviously hard-headed. The president of China, he's hard-headed as well. Them two together, I don't know if they're going to come to a deal. No one really knows. But I'm just playing it by ear, guys. Of course, paying attention to everything that's going on is super, super important. So that's pretty much it you know, for the overall market update here. I would love to know what you guys have to say about the markets. Do you think we're going to continue this push to the downside? Do you think markets, stocks are bound to recover? I would love to know what you guys have to think. Drop a comment down below. So what did I end up doing today in terms of my trading? Well, I ended up trading TVIX today. And TVIX is an ETF I trade a bunch on on uh, in, in my portfolio, and I talk about it a bunch on the channel. And this is a volatility ETF. It trades on the VIX, and it trades and it goes up in price when the overall markets are volatile and heading in the downwards direction. Right? We noticed the VIX today ended up going up 40 cents at the close here. It's, it was up 2.29 percent, but we can see at the peak it was at 19 dollars. So we saw some pretty good volatility during this time period, and this is exactly when I ended up trading um, TVIX. And take a look at the market here as well. It's kind of, uh, the VIX kind of moves in uh, inverse, inverse to the S&P 500 in a way, right? We notice how we gapped down in the morning. The futures were red, which told me that, okay, today might be another red day. That was the first light bulb. That was the first hint that I personally saw. And then we started to see a consolidation and a slow rebound in the S&P. And then once we started to get to where we ended up opening on the S&P, which was roughly where we got rejected at set 2790, we started to sell off again. And at this point, 
I noticed the VIX was starting to spike up. Just take a look at this time correlation here, 10.30 a.m. Take a look at what the VIX was doing at 10.30 a.m. It was kind of bottoming out at this point, and it started to spike up aggressively. And again, the markets were selling off at this particular time, and that opened up my eyeballs, the light bulb went in my head, TVIX might be the play right here. So this is when I ended up just getting into TVIX, you know, as the markets continued to sell off and as the VIX continued to spike, ended up getting into TVIX at about, I believe, like $24.45. And this was kind of just a, my thought process behind this was for it to fill the gap. Profit on the gap filled here, and again, the VIX, S&P, the S&P was selling off, the VIX was spiking. These were a couple of different things that were confirming my trade here in TVIX. So we got the sell-off from $25 at the open down to about $24. Again, I got in roughly at about $24.40, and I ended up just riding it up a bit. Uh, I didn't fill the entire gap because if I did wait for the entire gap to be filled, I would have made 4%, but I made roughly half of that. So today I made about 2% on my trade in TVIX. It almost got up. I believe I sold a little bit under $25 here. It was around like $24.90, $24.95. And that's pretty much it for the day today, guys. A lot of the time, you know, I get questions, you know, are you trading stocks all day? Are you hopping in and out of stocks all day? And a lot of the time, guys, I'm either doing uh, one or two or three trades. I'm not one of these guys that's just hopping in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, I like taking my profits and then stopping for the day, right? Because I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced this where you end up hopping into a trade, you make let's say 2%, and then you start to get greedy, right? You want to go to the next one and make more money, but let's say the next one you go into, you end up losing money, right? Let's say you lose that profit you made on the first trade, and now you're in this pattern where I made money, I lost a little bit of money. Okay, let me go and try to make the money back. And then you're in this pattern where you're hopping in and out and you do five, six, seven, eight trades. You know, this is something that I used to do, I'll be honest, but I've been avoiding doing that recently, right? Just like on Friday, I ended up taking a loss on drip. I did not try and revenge trade. I did not try and, you know, try to recoup those losses. I just stopped trading for the day. That's something that I do, you know, all the time, right? There are some times when I'm guilty when I do trade or over trade, I guess, but that is a very small amount of the time, guys. So took my profits today, 2%. Could I have tried and traded more? Sure, I could have, but again, I take my profits and I run. That's all I did today, guys. So let me know in the comment section, what did you end up trading today? So let's talk about some stocks, some movement of stocks here, the FANG stock. Let's go over some, um, you know, the crude oils, the natural gases, gold. Let's just talk about some of these very quickly. What am I personally watching? And we'll end off the video. So Apple stock today has continued to drop. We saw the run up to 179, the push down to 176, lower high at 178. And we're kind of in a wedge right now, right? You notice how on the intraday chart, we're kind of in this little wedge. So tomorrow, I'll be excited to see which way are we going to go. Are we going to pop out? Are we going to sell off, right? Let's say tomorrow we end up having that bounce back day in the markets. We might see a run up to 180 on Apple, but if we continue to sell off, this one's most likely going to sell off as well. And a lot of people look at Apple as one of the main stocks that kind of... Uh, determine how the market is doing in a sense, right? It's not the main stock, but it's one of the stocks that people look at to determine how the market is doing. And we've noticed how bad Apple has been performing from 215 down to 177, guys. And it's just a bunch of the same, right? We're getting rejected by the moving averages here, the bearish cross. We keep dropping and dropping and dropping, right? Some of the other fang stocks here, you know, Facebook was down $2 today, down about 1%. We're seeing the bearish cross here. The 50 SMA is acting as a resistance. This one seems to me from a technical basis, it's continuing to sell off here. You know, if we're looking at Google, right, you're seeing a lot of the same. We had a 2%, almost a 2% loss today in Google stock, down about $17 per share here. You're noticing Netflix is dropping back into the 340s right now. It was down about $6 today, down about 1.58%. 
Another one that was up yesterday was AMD, and AMD ended up dropping 3% today. Like we talked about in yesterday's video, the $30 level, the $29 to $30 level over the past couple of weeks here on AMD stock has been a very weak level for AMD, and quite frankly, it's been a strong resistance, right? Notice how, you know, every time we've gotten to that level, 29-ish, 28.75, 29-ish, you know, 29.50, we've sold off from that level literally every single time not no joke every single time look at this we sold off we sold off we sold off we sold off there we sold off there and it just continues right it continues to sell off but now we're noticing how again we sold off but we're actually seeing some price consolidation at a higher low from the previous here so could this be a point in time where AMD does end up you know maybe recovering and bouncing and potentially filling the gap up back up to 2930 maybe 2940 only time will tell but I'm personally waiting to see if that does end up happening right because we can see you know it's uh it lost about four or five percent in terms of uh, the, the value here in the stock and again we're seeing the consolidation this could be a potential day trade over the next couple of days if it does end up playing out right if we do end up getting back out of this level of resistance at about 2840 maybe the, into the 2850 level that's a point in time where I'm interested in playing AMD so let's talk about some other uh, you know uh, uh, futures here that we follow the gold futures they're currently down about two dollars right now down about 0.16 percent gold's kind of been you know kind of eh over these past couple of days hasn't really been doing much looking to see if we end up breaking out of the $1,300 level that could be good for JNUG which is a bull ETF that we trade on this channel which goes up when gold is going up in price we saw crude oil today had a pretty decent bounce back day but overall the trend is downwards we're noticing the bearish cross the 50 SMAs crossing below the 180 SMA here you know potentially tomorrow if we start to get up and we retest that 50 SMA we start to get rejected you know, DWT could be a very good play, which is an ETF that goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So I'm watching that rejection zone on crude oil. If we get the confirmation of the rejection, DWT can be very good, and we can already see the margin of profit being opened here. Keep an eye if we trade down to the 50 SMA support on the 184-hour chart. This could be a bounce zone and a nice entry on DWT. So LABU and LABD, those are another combo of inverse ETFs that I personally trade sometimes not as frequently as these other ones but it's still worth watching in my opinion because they trade on SPS IBI this S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index and whenever this index is selling off like it has been LABD which is the bear ETF it goes up in price so the fact that we're still trending below the 50 SMA 50 SMA is acting as a resistance here the downtrend is still intact so tomorrow let's say markets drop let's say that scenario ends up playing out SPS IBI starts to drop as well voila LABD will be a very very good play and again we can see what the price action is looking like pre-market hours but let's say we get a bullish pop here on SPS IBI we break out of the 50 SMA resistance LABU the inverse to LABD which goes up whenever SPS IBI is going up it pretty much just moves in the same direction you know LABU might be the good play tomorrow right so these are all ones that I'm just keeping my eyes on today guys of course TVIX uh, uh, you know I'm watching that one as well as volatility continues to spike up as markets continue to be iffy selling off this is one that I always watch in these situations guys in this type of market and for all you long-term viewers you know that right so sqqq is another one that i'm personally watching it did pretty well today up a dollar two cents 2.43 percent uh in the green today and this one trades on the nasdaq 100 based on the nasdaq whenever the nasdaq is going down sqqq is going up in price at a 3x rate that the nasdaq is going down so nasdaq goes down one percent sqqq will will be up 3%. So this is one that I'm watching and the inverse is TQQQ 
three Qs. This one goes up when the uh, NASDAQ is going up at a 3x rate. So let's say the NASDAQ's up 1% one day. TQQQ is going to be up 3% roughly on that same day. And this is going to be one that I'm watching for a potential market bounce tomorrow. So as you guys notice, you know, I have a bunch of different stocks and ETFs that I watch for every single market scenario, right? For the bear side and for the bull side. And this is what has led to my success as a trader. I always have some options for both sides of the spectrum, right? I'm not always just making money when the markets are going up. I'm also making money when the markets are going down. And that's super, super important in trading stocks, right? Because, you know, a lot of people say, and this is kind of, uh, I've, I've found this to be true, that the market, it falls like three times as quick as it goes up, guys. Take a look at this, right? On the three-year, uh, one-week chart, oh, not on TQQQ, let's take a look at the SPX very quickly before I sell off um, or uh, end off this video. Just take a look at the SPX, right? It rose from 26.20 all the way up to 2,900. How long did that take? That took about you know, a couple of months here, like five, six months. And then it tanked from 2,900 all the way down to 2,300 in literally the matter of two months. So that just goes to show that it falls a lot quicker than it goes up. And I figured I'd just mention that. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that. And um, the point of that is you can make money on both sides, right? On the downside, on the upside, you should always have a plan. And remember, don't just trade any of these stocks, any of these ETFs. Don't buy anything in the stock market based off of my opinion. You have to understand the risks that's involved. You have to understand all of these things for yourself to make a sound and um, informed decision for yourself. And this will lead to your success in the stock market. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Drop a comment. Let me know how you guys ended up doing today. I would love to know and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I actually uploaded a video earlier today talking about two value stocks that I'm personally looking to swing trade. So go to check out that video if you have time after this one. I promise you'll find some value in that one as well. So I hope you guys enjoy your night. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.